Uh, I want to make this quick video about how to install a uh, theme kit on your computer like, so that you're able to easily edit uh, Shopify websites uh, without using the browser uh, code editor, uh, which can be uh, very limiting in a lot of cases. So uh, I'm just going to give you kind of a short demonstration of um, the browser that Shopify provides you with. Sorry, not browser, uh, a code editor. Um, and I mean, it's very, it's very good for when you want to edit something small uh, and you want to make little changes to your code where you don't necessarily want to connect uh, the Shopify store uh, to your terminal on your computer. Uh, so it's very good for that, for little changes. But if you're working on a complete theme a rebuild or there's a lot of customization that you want to do for the website, then... I would definitely recommend uh, using ThemeKit and actually uh, using the API from the Shopify uh, website uh, to, to bring the code over to your own code editor. Uh, in my case, I use VS Code. Uh, so basically, this is the theme editor uh, or the code editor that Shopify gives you. Uh, but let's take a look at how to actually connect ThemeKit. So if we actually just Google ThemeKit, uh, well, we're going to get these instructions. So uh, the best way that I found to do it and the easiest way is to actually do it through Homebrew. So Homebrew allows you to basically easily install uh, things. It's kind of like uh, if you ever use NPM, it's going to be very uh, easy for you to also uh, switch over to Homebrew for this. Uh, so you, tell, you just want to take this, uh, this command over here and uh, just run it in, in your terminal. So I actually already have it installed, so I'm gonna cancel this. Uh, and then the next one is to actually install ThemeKit. So uh, after you've uh, pasted this command in here as well, uh, of course, I'm not gonna do that because I already have it installed. Uh, the next one is to go into, I believe, uh, commands. So if you already have an existing store and you just want to connect it, you would use configuration. So as you can see, this is the uh, the command that we would use in the terminal. And we basically, we need the theme ID, uh, we need the Shopify store name, and we need the API key. So why don't we start with the API key? The API key can be obtained by going to apps, uh, manage private apps at the bottom there, create a new app if you don't have one existing uh, and then we'll just uh, name this uh, test connection theme kit and we need to uh, put in the developer email uh, for emergency um, and a lot of things that you can see here by default is read access only uh, so we need a few things that we need uh, read and write access because we want to be able to change things. And I like to just honestly uh, give access to everything since this is my own store, my test store. But of course, if you're working with uh, a client or a, or a store that, that is not yours, then uh, you don't need access to a lot of these things like reports, um, you know, discounts, unless you're actually doing those things. Uh, let's see what else. I think that's pretty much everything that we need. No scripts. Shopify payments. Uh, I think that's actually everything that we're going to need for this. So let's save that. It's going to give you a little warning here. And here we go. We're given the API key password. So uh, why don't we just go over here and copy this whole thing? Nope. I don't want it to. Sometimes when you copy an extra space, it runs the command automatically for you. Uh, so let's go to the password. We'll delete that and then we'll go to our app. We'll copy the password. Go back here, paste it. And then we need the store name. So in our case, um, let me go over here again. And we're going to be able to see the store name. 
So the store name is Scanners Example, Shopify. Oh, actually, we might need to remove the HTTPS. And now we need the theme ID. Uh, you can actually obtain the theme ID by going to your theme and clicking, clicking customization or customize. And this number over here is your theme ID. So let's go over here. We'll type that in. And this basically creates um, a config file. Oops. I think I forgot to move it. So let me just go over here uh, and move the config in the demo. Uh, theme. And we can see that the config file is actually, so if we open that uh, config.yml, we'll see that it gave you all these things. Okay, and it's okay that you're seeing my password right now because this is just a development store, it has nothing on it. Uh, but usually you would want to keep that password safe as that's basically uh, the password for your API key, which you can get a lot of information as we saw there. Um, and now we do theme. Oh my God, type is terrible. Uh, download. So what this is going to do is actually just download the whole theme. Uh, and as we can see over here, it's warning you that this is a live theme on the store. So every all the changes you're making are actually going to affect the live uh, Shopify store. So we'll give it some time to download. We just finished downloading. Uh, if you have VS code, then you can just type in uh, code dot and it's going to open the uh, the VS code editor for you. And as you can see, we have all of the files that are actually on the Shopify uh, theme uh, or the in-browser uh, editor for the theme. And we can just take a look over here. See, so we have the same template. And from this, you would, you're gonna wanna open the, the terminal again. I, I like to use the, uh, the VS Code terminal editor already built in. Uh, and we're going to want to do uh, theme watch. So if you ever use SAS on, uh, on, on node JS, then this is very similar where you do, you know, SAS watch or node SAS watch. This is very similar. Uh, it's basically watching for all the changes that you do to the files. Um, one other important thing to mention is that the data flows only to the, uh, to the store. Okay, so if you're making changes in the code editor inside of the browser over here, uh, the, the, the changes that you make here are not going uh, into your own uh, code editor on your computer. So every time if you make a change in the browser, you need to actually do theme download again. So basically the theme watch only goes one way. It's only watching for, for changes on your computer and it's uplo uploading them to the uh, Shopify API. So that's a very important thing to note. Uh, using the customizer is fine. So the customizer uh, will, will work uh, without you having to do theme download every time. Um, but if you're making small changes in the code in the browser, then you want to do theme download. Uh, anyways, uh, thanks for tuning in. I just wanted to make this quick video about ThemeKit. I hope it helps you on your future projects. Cheers.